Is everybody there? Jessica, Kelly, son of my favorite, yeah, son of my favorite doctor. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Uh, hi, Lewis. How's it going? It's great. I'm so thrilled to talk to you again. Last time we chatted you was too. last time we talked was then that follow. We were hoping for yeah. Maverick, but no luck there yet. Um, and this we'll is get a, there. We'll, we're making it there. I know. More exciting. But and I'm thrilled to talk to Jessica and Kelly. Guys, this is an incredible film. It is you. Uh, it is youthful. It is vibrant. It is energetic. Kelly, you perfectly capture that vibe of not only the '90s, but of the character of Winona, which I know is a very cathartic story for you to tell. You guys all knock this one out of the park. Thank you. Well, you and like so excited. Like I feel like I've known you for like ten years. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm curious. For for you, Lewis, and for you, Jessica, what was it about this script? Because each of you already has such an eclectic resume with the roles that you take. And, Lewis, for you, this is a character of Ben that we think is going to, Mr. Sweater Vest is going to be a really nice guy. And we all know how Ben turns out. And, Jess yeah, and, yeah. and Jessica, you're just like, off the charts, energy tw on Red Bull, twenty four seven almost. Um, you're like an over sugared Smurf. Um, so yeah. I'm curious. <laughs> so I'm, cur <laughs> I'm curious what the two of you. What was it when you got this script that said, "I've got to do this." I really wanted to work with Kelly. She offered me the film on Instagram, like over DM. Which she's like, why wouldn't you want to take that? I was like, this is sick. Like, this, she, I, don't, I wanted to be friends with her. I also couldn't believe that Kelly's so cool. So I was like, I can't believe that she kind of wants me to play her. I was kind of intimidated by that, but I wanted to take it on. But also, when I read the script, I wish that this movie existed five or ten years ago when I was younger. So I felt so kind of privileged to be contributing something positive to hopefully contributing something positive to younger people and their journey with mental illness and mental health and also I wanted to be able to do something constructive with my own journey with my mental health and I was you know I have anxiety and I'm quite open about that and um I was so ready to just try and like make the best of it and do something creative and do something constructive with it and try and like own this part of my life that I wanted to hide but instead do something and like apply it to a role and do my job and that's what my job can do that's amazing. I can make the best of something that's kind of bad and that's what I wanted to do. And what about for you, Lewis? Yeah, I mean, I think similarly, well, I, when I read the script, it just felt like I, it, it, I hadn't read a story about mental health that wasn't so, like, unapologetically itself, mm -hmm. and, and it also didn't feel like it was, like, it was fun and funny while also taking, the, taking it wildly seriously, um, which I thought made it easier for me to kind of like it's not it snuck up on me because of that you know and i think it wasn't like you know um just like this psa at all the acronym of the movie is psa but it doesn't feel like P a psa you know yeah. it feels like um something and you can just hear kelly's voice in it and as soon as you know i got the role i read um everything is perfect when you're a liar and i was like this is this I, I, I want to meet this person and I want to, this story is so clearly so personal that uh, it's, it, it was an interesting thing when you, whenever you work with somebody who has a, who the subject matter is so personal to them, it can, I think go either way of like, sometimes mm -hmm. people can be so 
and rightfully so, like protective of it while, and wanting to be it to be so perfect, which was, I thought what Kelly what was so um, impressive was like your ability to um, like let go of certain things. Like it didn't always have to be exactly how it happened and you were so flexible and like you, you knew what the heartstrings of the movie were and as long as those things were in place, it was going to be, you know, it was going to be successful. And so... I, I just was, yeah, basically the script. I was like, I just, I, and and then also once I heard Jessica's, I, a huge, you know, huge fan of Jessica's, and I think I just watched Jungle Land, which was so fucking good, and I had our, and I was a huge fan of End of the Fucking World, and I was like, I think this girl's going to be the next, you know, she's one of the best of our generation, so I want to, I, I would be this fool if not, they, like, I was just, and then he all of it was like, she's all right, like, she's okay, like. No, and then I was like, no, I was like, it was fucking absolutely fulfilling and awesome. She did suck on a jewel in between every take, which I then was like, which I was like, okay, that's what gives her energy and fucking just like makes her unstoppable and like has no end, like an endless well of energy. I mean, and that, as you watch this film, until we get to that third act, and Kelly, this is kudos to you with your construct of this script. And how you maintain and you build this energy and you build this energy and you build it. And Jessica, you keep it going. My God, you must have been exhausted every day after shooting. Um, but Kelly, you did such a great job at building us up. And as Lewis said, it's not, you didn't make this a PSA, uh, you know, about mental health and or mental illness. And... Um, the way you craft this is so key. And not only do you let the performances carry us through until we sober up in that third act for the full reality, um, but then you use all of your artisans. Your production design, Courtney Andrejar's production design is out of this world with Winona's bedroom. And of course, Charlie Saroff, you keep this film so visually light um, that it, we do not get depressed or, or maudlin watching it. So we're paying closer attention. And yeah. Yeah. How, well said, yeah, totally. how difficult was that for you, Kelly, in putting these, the crafts elements together to buoy, to buttress these incredible performances? Well, thank you for saying that, first of all. Um, cause that's what, what I hoped would happen with the film, with, you know, the third act. Um, I really just wanted to write it the way life feels before you have a panic attack, your first panic attack. You know, you're just going through life in normal ways and you're preoccupying yourself with things that aren't yourself. After you're diagnosed, especially, and you're young, um, if you're diagnosed with a mental condition, the first thing you kind of want to do is run away from it. And so I wanted to show, you know, the actual journey without using tropes, because I don't feel like any of the tropes that I've seen in the past feel like me. So I honestly just, you know, wrote it from my point of view when I was that age and, and all of the steps you know, before I had my first panic attack. No, I mean, you've done just an amazing, amazing job with it. Um, you know, I'm curious, because you took, my understanding is you took one of your essays and turned it into the script. Yes. How difficult was that to do and still personalize it but create an objectivity that would translate visually. Right. Well, I always, you know, when I wrote the essay, I could see the essay. I could see exactly what Ben's mom looked like um, sitting in the living room, all of those things. Um, but because it was an essay, you know, you're so much more limited mm -hmm. in, what, in what you can do. And, and a film is so much more story. So I built on that essay and I put in, you know, like, three more arcs into the into the film and I found it so satisfying because because the essay was so well, well received that's why I decided to turn it into a script when I was on my book tours it was the essay that everybody would come up to me and say how much it meant to them 
And I thought, wow, you know, there aren't many readers anymore. And if all of these readers love the story, imagine how much it could touch people if it were on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was really fueled by the excitement of that throughout the writing process. So I found it actually really easy to do, to translate from an essay to a script. Wow. You know, I've got to ask you, Jessica, how fun was, was Winona's bedroom? I just did another interview and they said what was my favorite part of exploring the 90s and I said the bedroom because it felt, you know, we don't have bedrooms like that anymore. I I mean, I was born in the 90s, but I definitely grew up in the 2000s, so all of our identity was like online. All of the expression of ourselves as we're growing up was done like through a MySpace profile or like a Facebook profile. And the bedroom was, I don't know, you just, like, walked into it and you're like, oh, this is who the person is. I love it. You know, set design is so important to actors. And I feel like we have this conversation a lot. Like, I mean, Lewis, you'll probably agree. Like, we have this conversation on set with set designers. We're like, wow, like, you did such a good job. Like, as soon as I walked into this house, it helped me understand the character. But I feel like we don't really talk about it a lot in interviews but it's so important like mm-hmm. it's the way that they read the script and they're interpreting your character it's so and when they nail it and you walk into your bedroom like on this you're like oh wow like, it informs you so many more things about the character yeah it's, yeah it's important as costume and hair and makeup but it doesn't have you know i guess to the audience and like people outside of the industry it's not something that you really think of but it's so important and this made me it helped me understand way more about my character and they placed things in that room where okay so when we were filming the panic attack that really was like over two days of me just crying and having a panic attack and the things the attention to detail in that room when it was like 6 p.m. on the Friday night before the end of, like, a really long week. There was things in the room, can you remember, that were, like, making me cry, imagining Winona's life and being, like, in character, like, oh, I remember, like, you could remember, like, her as, like, a younger person and, like, now she's said they're having a panic attack and how afraid you would feel. The attention to detail in it really kind of saved me when you're so tired at the end of a week and you need to be, like, triggered into an emotion. Um, they did all of that. Yeah, I mean, it's the production design, that bedroom. And I have to say, kudos to you, Kelly, and and Courtney, on the design of that bedroom. I'm looking at the bed, and I grew up in the 1960s. I was born in the 50s, so I grew up in the 60s. But uh, my, the headboard on my bed was a heart, very similar, but it was a white enamel instead of day-glow green. As to what, as to what Winona had on her bed. That one, that one was white, and they painted it. It was. It's actually Courtney and Hillary, her twin sister, that did the production design, and um, they. It was a white bed, and they painted it green. Oh wow, wow, yeah, yeah that tickled me to see that that kind of detail, and then the hand knitted and crochet, you know, hand knitted and crocheted little stuffed animals. Um, that yeah. inf- really informed us about the character of Winona, that why her dad thinks of her as a little girl, why she still goes to a pediatrician. She can't really accept adulthood yet. And it's, it's adds so much metaphor to the character. But, you know, yeah. Jessica... There, there, are also, there were also things on the shelf that I loved so much that were, like, mixed in, like kind of adult books with her mm-hmm. childhood books. Just little tiny things like that. wrote the part on the wall. Do you remember there was like the part where they just written far on the wall? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like in the middle of one of the takes, I was like, I just saw the word far written on the <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think we have about time for one more question. Well, it's only fair that since Jessica brought up costume, I've got to ask Lewis about you know, Ben's costume, wearing that, that, you know, thin little, like, hippie 1960s choker and a sweater vest. Um, how did that help you inform Ben? <laughs> um, well, it was so fun, to, you know, to try and figure out what Ben 
Well, also, like, just like, like what Jessica was talking about, I was born in the 90s, but I, like, don't really remember much of the 90s. So I wasn't Ben's age, you know, in the 90s, right. obviously. So I I just had to, you know, just, just I was like, it just put me in whatever you think is right. And, 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 and also, I, but also Kelly and I were, like, throwing pictures of, back and forth of like puka shell necklaces and of like of like uh bleached tips since we were we almost did a whole bleached tip thing <laughs> um but it was just fun because it was like i it, it really you know this guy this character i i also i was so enticed by it was because like his, his literary surf uh service is like kind of you know when you're in a fucking in a rut excuse me on a rut and and, and you think somebody else is going to be the window out or somebody else is going to actually, you don't have to do all the work that needs to be done or, or admit what's actually happening. And you can, maybe you can just use this person as a scapegoat. And I thought it was perfectly well written because you don't, he's so, he feels on the page felt so real. And all this stuff was just like, I know met this guy, I met versions of this guy. And this, I've seen the versions of this pretension everywhere in college. And, and, um, and so the, the, I think, like, literally, you you put a puka shell necklace on your a choker on, and, you, and you're a different guy. So it helps a lot. Yeah, well, you know, puka shells, you know, that goes back to David Cassidy in the 70s. So, um... right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, guys, I have to thank you all so much. Thank you for talking to me today. I, I do. I love the film so much. Lewis, please yeah. give my best to your dad. I sure will. Thank you so much for the thoughtful questions. It was so good talking to you again. Always. And we're going to hit Maverick. And Jessica, I'm going to hit you. I just got the link for Holler. So I'm actually oh, going to... Yeah, I hope you enjoy that one. It's kind of different to that. So I've already told the publicist that, uh, that I have to talk to you about that one. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> and Kelly, I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of Bye. your night. Bye-bye. You